ever dream that you could change the world? Maybe in your dreams you were Superman or Wonder Woman or one of the members of the Justice League catching evil villains. Maybe you dreamed of being a doctor and finding a cure for cancer. Maybe you dreamed of being someone like Jane Goodall and saving endangered animals from extinction. You know, you know who else had a dream? This guy, Martin Luther King Jr. I have spent the last two months honored to be speaking at We Day across Canada with his son, Martin Luther King III. He's keeping his father's legacy and spirit alive for my generation. One of the messages he shared is a quote from educator Horace Mann. Be ashamed to die until you have won a victory for humanity. He went on to explain what this means to him. Some of us will win victories in our communities. Some of us will win victories in our cities. Some will win victories in our provinces. And some will even win victories in our country. And some may even win victories in the world. Be ashamed to die until you have won a victory for humanity. In other words, be ashamed to die until you have done a little something to make the world a little better than it was before you arrived. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream was much more than a dream. It was a spark. We know about his dream because it was a spark. A spark that grew stronger and bigger and more powerful when it touched other people. There's sparks like his that never go out. It all starts with a spark. You have one. I know you do. Maybe you have identified it. Maybe you haven't. I want to tell you the story of my spark. And maybe through hearing about my journey, you'll discover and ignite yours. When I was nine years old, I wanted to start a blog. I didn't know what I wanted it to be about. I just knew that I wanted to do it. My parents encouraged me to choose something that I was going to explore, learn about, and share with people. I've always loved animals. I've never walked by a dog without asking if I could pet it. I started to make the connection between animals and the environment. I began to realize that the damage that we are doing has such a big impact on them. And it is our doing that has put many species at risk of extinction. I decided that I was going to blog about the environment. I was going to learn, model, and inspire others to be more eco-friendly in their homes, schools, and communities. While I continue to blog about the environment, I also blog about things and people that inspire me and have included posts about bullying, homophobia, child labor, taking action, and literacy. Post by post, comment by comment, action by action, I came to realize that there are other young people who are just as passionate about their spark as I am. I was part of, I was part of the eco team at school and I learned that little things add up to make a big difference. We organized the recycling programs and rewarded classes for the eco successes. I became a team captain for a hour with the WWF and was the official on the ground eco blogger for the Juno Awards. Through these activities, I learned about Craig and Mark Gilberger and Free the Children. They were saying what I was beginning to realize, that I, that any young person, am never too to make a difference. My year of action has taught me that I'm lucky. We all are. To have been born in Canada, where my family and I are safe and healthy, to live in Canada means I get to go to school. Had I been born in Kenya, India, or Haiti, I would spend my days walking for miles to collect water and helping my family with daily chores just to live. We are lucky because for most of us, we get to be concerned about living well. Now places, the biggest concern is simply living. With this luck though, comes the need to act and live wisely. You just need to find your spark. That issue that makes you take action every single day. Every movement, every call to action starts with a spark. Once you have identified that spark, you need to find your community. A big part of my journey has been about finding my community. Last summer, I went to Free the Children's Take Action Camp, where I learned how to turn my spark into action. There are kids like me, ready to be the change they wish to see in the world. There is one big lesson that I took away that I want to share with you today. One afternoon, a facilitator gathered us together for an activity. We went outside to find a large square roped off. They called the, the activity the lockbox. 
The task seems simple enough. Find your way out. There's one catch though. You're blindfolded. I felt confident that I could do it. I faced far bigger challenges and I always love a good challenge. As time went on and I heard that others had found the way out, I began to get frustrated. What was I doing wrong? I took a deep breath and I asked for help. I was shown the way out. After the last one of my group was out, our facilitator explained what the lockbox was all about. You can't do everything alone. Sometimes you can only reach your goal with help. I look around the room and know that none of us has ended up here because we did it alone. We've had encouragement from our parents and support from, from our friends and teachers. Sometimes you find help as inspiration in the life, actions, and accomplishments of another person or group of people. I have found many people to be inspired by every day. Severin Suzuki, daughter of David Suzuki, was one of my very first role models. I watched her speech at the UN when she was only 12 years old, where she was called the girl who silenced the world for five minutes. She pleaded with them to stop destroying the environment that we all share. If you can't fix it, please stop breaking it, she said. Craig and Mark Kielberger inspire me and millions of young people every day. They founded Free the Children because they believed that we are never too young to change the world. And it's true. Al Gore, a fellow eco-warrior, inspires me with these words. <laughs> the will to act is a renewable resource. I also find this kind of inspiration in Spencer West. When Spencer was a very young boy, his legs were amputated and he was told he would never walk or be an active citizen. His parents were told to teach him to, to read and write because that is all he would ever be able to do. Spencer inspires me with his motto, no can't, no won't, only how. I watched last year as Spencer made it to summit of Mount Kilimanjaro to raise awareness and money for clean water in developing countries on his hands. But Spencer didn't do it alone either. He did it with his two best friends, David and Alex. <coughs> Along the way up the mountain, each one of them had moments where they thought they could not make it. As each one of them faced obstacles, they encouraged each other, each other to keep going. They leaned on each other. They helped each other. Like the lockbox, they understood that they needed to do it together and that they could not do it alone. That is the how and no can't, no won't, only how. I think I have time for one more story. It's a good one. It's a story I shared on the We Day stage across Canada. It's about a young girl, a world changer, who was born in Pakistan. Her name is Malala. She was born in a town filled with violence, gunfire, and bombs of at night. She lost her right to live in peace, her right to be trained with equality, and her right to an education. To get an education, Malala and many of her friends studied in secret. This doesn't just happen in Pakistan. Around the world, there are millions of, millions of girls who are denied education. At just 10 years old, Malala spoke up. She started a blog about the challenges she had to overcome to go to school and pursue her dream of being a doctor. For safety, she had to publish each post of her secret identity. Thousands of people read it, but it wasn't enough to stop the inequality. She believed that in order for change to happen, she needed to reveal herself and give her words a face. Talk about courage. One year ago, Lala was on a, bus, on a bus coming home from school when a man with a gun came on board. He was looking for Lala, threatening to kill everyone if she didn't stand up. Wanting to live, but wanting to save her friends, she stood up, she was shot in the head. They thought they could silence her. They were wrong. She survived, and her voice was even louder. On her 16th birthday, she spoke at the United Nations. Her words will stay with me forever. I speak, not for myself, but for those without a voice. As I watched the speech at the UN, I thought to myself, Lala and I have a few things in common. We both began to use our voice through blogging when we were 10. We used our education to put our messages out there to the world. We both realized that the voice of young people, of girls, matter. Neither one of us set out to be activists. When our voices were heard and added to other young voices, we saw that we could change the future. 
I've learned a lot about being a change maker this past year. It's not easy. Support is important. You can't do it alone. It feels good. It changes you. I get asked a lot, and so do my parents, how am I doing this at only 10 years old? I'll tell you, I have never been told that I can't do something. Well, except that time I wanted to set up a Twitter account, but you have to be 13. <laughs> when you surround yourself with people who inspire you and people who think that you can do something, amazing things will happen. My parents filled this role for me. They have encouraged me to find my spark and to follow my dream. My mom and dad are here today. They're even more nervous than me before getting up on stage to speak at TEDx today. I had to keep telling them, Mom, Dad, it's going to be okay. <laughs> the other day, my mom read me this African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Find your spark, find your community, and go far together. I wish you all a journey that is as safe, exciting, and fulfilling as mine has been so far. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.